Welcome to Moon Audio. How can we help you? Yes, can you please present me with your finest digital audio players, please, sir? Right away, sir. Joffrey. Thank you. Enjoy. Mmm, looks lovely. If you're a fan of all things audio gear and music, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss our latest videos on all the... <coughs> Nailed it. Today we're going to look at the portable heavyweights of the DAP world. The Cayenne N8 Mark II, the Estellan Kern SP3000, and the Sony NWWM 1ZM2. These are arguably the best you can get in portable music players and sound quality in the audiophile world. Premium components, premium internals, premium features, and of course, premium sound quality. You're not gonna get any better than this. Sony, Estellan Kern, and Cayenne are some of the top DAP brands in the audiophile market. And I'll be honest, their flagship models are just as close to in-game sound as you're gonna get out of a single portable music player. So with that being said, we wanted to take a look at how these flagship DAPs compare to each other. Specs, sound quality, value, and more. If you have the cash and you want the best, but not sure which one to pick, then this video is for you. Let's take a look at how the Cayenne N8 Mark II, the Sony NWWM 1Z M2, and the Estellan Kern SP3000 stack up in our flagship DAP comparison. Now the first app we're gonna take a look at is the SP3000. It's a Stellan Kern's top of the line portable player. If you're familiar enough with the Stellan Kern's products, then you know that they're some of the most futuristic looking devices on the planet. Angular and sharp chassis, their music players are aesthetically beautiful. The SP3000 is actually the first AK player to be made from stainless steel 904L. It's heavy, shiny with a mirror-like finish, you know it's quality. AK also upgraded the screen from their usual 5 inch to a 5.46 inch full HD screen. Combined with the updated software, it makes for a great navigational and viewing experience. Up top, you'll find three headphone ports, a 3.5 millimeter unbalanced, a 4.4 millimeter balanced, and a 2.5 millimeter balanced jack. You have your track skip buttons on one side and your volume knob slash power button on the other. And at the bottom of the SP3000, you'll find your USB-C charging port and the micro SD slot for expandable storage. Oh, and please use the included leather case or a case with it. There are a few things in this world as terrifying as dropping an SP3000 on the ground unprotected. The Cayenne N8 Mark II is a bit larger than the SP3000, thicker mostly. It has a CNC aluminum chassis which houses a shock-absorbing silicon compartment which protects the star of the N8, the new tubes. More on those later. On the top, you'll find the volume knob. The side are the power and track skip buttons along with the micro SD card slot for expandable storage. And the bottom, are the 3.5 millimeter unbalanced and 4.4 millimeter balanced headphone jacks, line out, and the I squared S and the USB-C charging port. It's an elegant design for an equally elegant music player. Use the included case. And of course we have the roll off the tongue Sony NWWM1ZM2. Look, you don't have to like the name, but look at this thing. Nothing screams flagship and expensive like gold, am I right? But really, it's a gold-plated OFC chassis that's not just stunning, but functional too. It strengthens the digital ground and improves noise shielding, resulting in, honestly, in clearer and better sound. In fact, many of these chassis are designed with function in mind too, not just aesthetics. 
On the top of the WM1ZM2 are the 4.4 millimeter balanced and 3.5 millimeter unbalanced headphone jacks. On the side are the power, track skip, and volume buttons, along with the hold slider and micro SD slot on the other side of the music player. And at the bottom, you'll see the USB-C charging port. The back of the player is the only one here with a contoured back. It's quite nice with a leather padded section to allow for a better grip. And of course, use a case. To sum up, at this price range, you're not going to find anything short of premium, premium, premium. These are the cream of the crop music players, and you'll know this from the moment you get the box in your hands. Each of these flagship dabs are equally made with exceptional materials and stunning designs. The main difference you'll find here between the dabs are the port selection. If you're hard set on having a balanced 4.4 millimeter jack, then lucky enough, all three have one. Same with the 3.5 millimeter. The Estellan Kern has the 2.5 millimeter balance jack if that's important to you. All charge and connect via USB-C. The Sony is all buttons, whereas the other two have volume knobs. All have micro SD and only the Cayenne includes an I squared S port. Now, let's get to some larger differences between these flagships. Bullseye. Nice. <laughs> We'll start again with the SP3000. One of the nice things about the AK's flagship music player is that they were first to market with the latest and greatest AKM flagship DAC. This will play more into the sound quality section of this video, which we'll get to in a bit later. But just know this, the SP3000 is the first product with the newest AK4499EX chipset. The DAP is configured with a quad DAC design and it uses the new innovative Hexa audio circuitry structure design that we'll get to in a minute. You'll want to hear about this one. The SP3000 uses silver plated shield cans, independent dual audio circuits, the latest Snapdragon octa-core processor, the 6125, and includes QC 3.0 fast charging. Some of my favorite aspects of the SP3000 are the DAC filters and crossfeed, allowing you to better tailor your sound to your personal listening preferences. You also get a Stellan Kern's proprietary AK file drop and BT Sync technology, allowing you to set up your DAP as a network drive and wirelessly drop files directly to the music player from your computer. With BT Sync, you can connect other Bluetooth devices to the DAP and access their music libraries as well. They're pretty neat and useful features and be sure to check out our videos on both AK File Drop and BT Sync to learn more. The Sony, on the other hand, has some very different things worth mentioning here. We talked about the gold-plated copper chassis, which helps with acoustic clarity. It has a lower ground resistance than competitors, and they use high-quality cables to connect to the jacks inside, as well as using top-end solder that contains gold. This supposedly improves the sound localization and presents a wider soundstage. But the big thing is that the battery life is a whopping 40 hours running 96 kilohertz FLAC audio playback. Now that's pretty impressive. It's basically four times the battery life of the SP3000. Sony also includes a vinyl processor for those that prefer a more analog sound. The Cayenne sports a dual vacuum tube, featuring two Korg new tube 6P1 double triode. We'll talk more about them in the sound quality section coming up, but they offer something the other two DAPs here don't. And those tubes affect the sound in a pretty dramatic way. The N8 offers a high output mode, which is nice for headphones that require a bit more oomph to drive them effectively. Dual operation mode also allows you to switch between class A and Class AB modes instantly. This also affects the sound of your music. Class A mode features low distortion and an optimum playback condition, giving you silky smooth, warm, and lush signatures to your music. Class AB mode features higher efficiency and dynamics, giving you a clean, tight, and some authoritative low end. The added line out is a nice feature for an added connection output option and the multicolor home button is great for additional song sample rate info. The SP3000 also has this feature with an LED ring around the volume knob. 
Super helpful if you have a library of various sample rates. Power ratings for each DAP will allow you to drive most headphones well. You're not going to have much luck with electrostatics or special impedance cans or IEMs, but the SP3000 and the N8 do have various gain stages for whatever power you might need. Each DAP has its own collection of features that makes it a great choice for any audiophile out there, but I would suggest those looking for more options in tailoring the sound of their music, the SP3000 has a nice selection of filters and the crossfeed settings sound awesome. If you like your music on the warmer side, then the tubes in the Cayenne or the vinyl processor in the Sony would be excellent options. I'm going to give extra points to Estelle and Kern here for their BT Sync and File Drop features, because they really add some nice convenience factors to those who like to choose wireless transfer options. Now keep in mind all these DAPs come with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Android OS, although Estelle and Kern has their OS overlay that minimizes some of the Android OS navigation. There are some security risks here that I'll mention in a second, but bottom line is you can't go wrong feature-wise with any of these flagship DAPs. One quick note here about Android-based OSs. Like most Android devices, the Sony and Cayenne DAPs come pre-equipped with the Google Play Store and a host of Google-supported apps. So when you log into the Google Play Store to download, say, Tidal or Cobuzz, you are automatically logged into all of your Google apps, including email. This can present a security risk given that your device is protected by a simple passcode. You would have to go in and log out of manually uninstall each app that you don't want. That's a pain. To get around this, you could bypass the Google Play Store and instead manually install any APK apps you desire directly onto the device. This can be done through apkpure.com or any other reputable APK sources. We'll put a link in the description below for our guide to installing APK packages on dApps. Not to delay the point any further, but how do these dApps sound? I think Estelle and Kern has made some significant improvements in the sound department this year with the new flagship. This is the maiden voyage for the world's first AK4499EX DAC chips, AKM's latest flagship set, which arranges them in a quad DAC format. On top of that, the new innovative HEXA audio circuitry structure design puts two AK4191EQ chips for processing digital signals directly. Estelle and Kern's marketing speak made this like really confusing for me at first. Let me break it down like this. The AK4191 chip handles the digital filtering and the initial Delta Sigma conversion stage, while the new flagship 4499EX does the final digital to analog conversion. Note that the DAC arrangement and design are implemented by AKM's chip architecture, not Estelle and Kern. Since Estelle and Kern collaborated in its development and is one of the first in the high-end consumer market to use one of these new chips. The 4499EX chip combined with the HEXA circuitry provides a richer, more dynamic listening experience that really shows off in the imaging, layering, and textures. The imaging on this thing is some of the best three-dimensional sonic renderings I've heard on an audiophile device. Sound-wise, the Sony is going to appeal to listeners who prefer a warmer, more analog signature with a smoother top end and plenty of bass punch. While the SP3000 is a resolute and rich sounding DAP with more defined top end, the Sony has sound adjustment options and the AK has six DAC filters, so users have options for playing around with the sound. Sony has a musicality to their DAPs that few others can match. It's lovely, especially for those genres wanting body, breadth, and extension. The 10 band equalizer is a great option for those who feel the need to manually adjust tonal aspects of their music. Sony also uses what they call DSEE Ultimate using Edge AI, artificial intelligence, DSEE Ultimate, digital sound enhancement engine, upscales compressed digital music files in real time. And the evolving algorithm now delivers even greater benefits for CD quality. 
restoring acoustic subtleties and dy did I say that right? Sub sub subtleties subtle sub subtleties. <laughs> Restoring acoustic subtleties and dynamic range, it provides a richer, more complete listening experience. Like a Selenkern's filters, the DC phase linearizer works to effectively replicate a wide variety of sonic signatures. It applies digital signal processing to match the phase characteristics of various types of analog amplifiers to deliver a pure, more analog-like sound. Choose from six phase character settings it's effective and makes for further customization options to adjust for your listening preferences. The N8 Mark II is equipped with dual ROM BD34301 EKV DAC chipsets. This is the first time the chipset has been implemented in a portable music player and each chip operates in mono mode, maximizing its performance. ROM DACs are phenomenal sounding and provide a natural but dynamic representation of the music. Some DAC chips, like ESS chips, can lean to the analytical side of the spectrum, whereas some AKM chips can give an oversaturated warm tone. ROM DACs lie somewhere in between, but what stands out to me about them are the organic nature of the sound. It's not adding anything artificial into the music. The N8 uses a fully balanced vacuum tube circuit, with the cord new tube mentioned previously. The dual tubes deliver smooth musical performance through the 3.5 millimeter single ended or the 4.4 millimeter balanced headphone output. The zero gain negative feedback loop circuit delivers strong current and impressive handling at different loads. The transparency, transients, and extension rivals the best solid state circuits on the market, but it remains warm and smooth. Tube is a vintage technology, but there's a reason it's still around and highly sought after by audiophiles. It sounds darn good. And to boot, it's not that common to find in a portable setup like a DAT. When it comes to music, the Cayenne delivers some of the most dynamic performances among all the DAPs here. So when it comes to DAPs, it's hard to get any better than the Cayenne N8 Mark II, the Sony WM1ZM2, or the AKSP 3000. They're leader of the pack in their respective brands and simply provide some of the best portable sound the audiophile market offers. Concerning sound signatures, if you like a warmer and more bodied tone to your music, the N8 Mark II and the WM1ZM2 are going to have a leg up on the SP 3000. The Stellan Kern tends to be more analytical in nature but the SP3000 is far from sounding analytical. It's rich and more nuanced than the others, highlights being the clarity and details that shine through. If you like being unplugged for as long as possible, then the Sony flagship wins hands down with the superb battery life. All the DAPs here functionally work in the same way, with nice responsive touchscreens, intuitive layout, similar ports, expandable storage, and more. I guess the lesson to be learned here is if you have the cash and you want the best of the best, go with one of these three. You won't be disappointed. If you like this video, be sure to give a thumbs up and remember to subscribe for more audiophile and music gear content just like this at Moon Audio. Let us know which flagship DAP would you choose and why. What's most important to you in selecting a high-end portable music player? If you have any questions about DAPs, be sure to leave a comment below and as always, Thanks for watching.